when you should bless him is at all times. Somebody say at all times. Don't just wait for your good to give him glory. You got to give him glory at all times. Somebody had to help me say it again at all times. I want you to get this because he's present and he's also able to prevent whatever is going in your life that can come against you. The note of Psalm 34 says at all times, while the note of Psalm 103 says in all that is within me. Notice the parallel at all times with all that is in me. When we put them together at all times, I got to praise him with all that's within me. I got to make sure that I am not skipping out on giving him the due that's due his name. Psalm 34 is the one who puts it to a challenge in the working of our faith. When the writer is just basically saying at all times, what he's saying is is just put him to the test. Look at your neighbor and say, just put him to the test. Oh yeah, you need to write that down. Tell somebody, just put him to the test. If you try him, you'll find out for yourself. I can preach until I'm blue in the face but if you would just put him to the test look at somebody say just put him to the test he'll prove himself if you put him to the test you'll see him work out stuff for you that nobody could work out for you if you would just put him to the test you'll see him turn around things for you you'll see him sustain things for you we see David acknowledged the Lord's continual blessing and protection and he urged others just to put him to the test because God's reputation is magnified by those who publicly acknowledge his goodness and his greatness. Why is it so important to put him to the test? I want you to listen to me. Why is it so important to put him to the test? Well, the reason why it's important to put him to the test is because he promised that your word is coming. <laughs> Y'all get what I'm saying in a minute. I just need you to say it to your neighbor. Say, your word is coming. Uh huh. They didn't get it. Look at somebody else. Tell them your word is coming. <laughs> you see, when you put them to the test, you got to understand that your word is coming. Somebody just talked to you and said, say, my word is coming. <laughs> Now let me help you understand what I'm talking about when I say my word is coming. Psalm 105 and 7 says, He sent a man before them, even Joseph was his name, who was sold for, for a servant, verse 18, whose feet they hurt with fetters when was laid when 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 was laid in iron so Joseph got hurt but what happened verse 19 until the time that his word came look at your neighbor and says your words gonna come your words gonna come you got to know your words about to show up can you tell your neighbor say neighbor time to tell your enemies you're not gonna hold me for long because my word is coming. The deal is, is that Joseph was caught in slavery. His brothers threw him in the pit and they kept him there. And the psalmist recorded and said he was hurt and he was damaged until his word came. And when your word comes, the rest of it says, when the word comes, the word of the Lord tried him. And the king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. Can I tell you that when God gets ready to free you he's got a word already ready to bring you to a place that all you have to do is trust what he already said about you. If you got a word that you can say I know that God's going to make a way because I'm trusting in the word of God. I know he made me a promise and I'm standing on that promise. While you yet going through and not feeling like blessing him you need to go back and say my word is coming and because my word that's coming I got liberty that's on the way I got blessing that's on the way I got renewal on the way I got restoration on the way I got a freshness on the way I got something brand new getting ready to happen and so anybody who's got a word that you're praying for and that you say God I'm taking this and I'm laying it on your word that no good thing would you withhold from them that walketh the brightly I'm laying my situation on the word that if I be willing and obedient I shall eat the good 
little land. I'm just laying it on your word that no weapon formed against me shall prosper and every tongue that rise against me shall be contempt. Oh my God, I'm putting my situation on the word. And so I may be hurt. I may be caught in the fetters, but I'm not mad, messed up about what I'm going through. Why, Bishop? Because my word is coming. Tell your neighbor my word is coming. I know that everything that God said, he's watching his word to perform it. And everything he said, he's hastening to it to bring me the result that he's already done. And when you're assured from the inside out, then you can start boasting about it. That's why the scripture said in Psalm 34 and 2 that my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Somebody talk and say, it's time now to build up again. Time now for you to pump it up. I didn't say get puffed up. I said pump it up. I said get to a place where you get in a, in a ramp. Not where you know everything. But when you get in a place where you get big enough in God that the enemy won't come at you like it came at you in the past. When you do it with humility, it does something brand new for your atmosphere. How can I get pumped up like that? Jeremiah 9 and 24 says, let not the wise man glory in his wise wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glory in, glory in this, that he knoweth and understandeth me, that I'm a God that observeth righteousness and a judgment in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. And so while God is yet setting you up to be blessed, don't get puffed up in yourself, but pump up in that you know him. Talk your neighbor say I'm glorying in this I'm getting big in the fact that I can trust in his word and God can make me alright regardless of whatever I have to go to and so this psalm is beginning to say I don't want to do this by myself I need to get a company of people with me in the process of magnifying talk to your neighbor say are you one of them that can praise God for what God is able to do in the earth ask your other neighbor say are you one of them who can lift up his name and tell the world around us how great he is you need to turn around and ask your neighbor are you one of them who can say you've got testimony and that test testimony will bring you to a brand new place in him are you the one can look in front of you and tell your neighbor are you one of them who can say that he brought you up and that he took you out and then he brings you in and he's keeping you alive well if they were talking about you won't you say I am one of them don't, don't mind lifting up and magnifying the Lord that's what they got together he said if you're one of them well all then magnify the Lord with me let us exalt I don't want to do it by myself. This is the praise of Jaffa in the Hebrew, which means unite together and praise and magnify him. Find somebody, unite together real quick and magnify him. Get with somebody that don't mind giving him glory and magnifying his name. If you take your testimony and put it on their testimony and begin uniting real praise and uniting real prayer and uniting real faith, anything can happen. Somebody help me preach here. Tell your neighbor if while you seek him, you make it personal, then he will also make your answer personal. Psalm 34 and 5 says they looked upon him and they were lightened when they began to glorify him. Smiles came on their faces. Their faces were no longer ashamed. They were now glad to say, God's got me. No matter what the world says, can anybody in here stand a little company here and tell your own neighbor, God got me no matter what the world says listen I don't have no doubt God can bring me out hey, I know God can make things happen
working for me. I learned this about him. In 6 verse of Psalm 34, it says this man, poor man cried. The Lord heard them and saved them out of all his troubles. Psalm 103 and 4 says, who redeemed my life from destruction, who covered me with loving kindness and with tender mercy. Tell your neighbor, mix them together and give God a praise because God is not only going to get you out of trouble, but he's going to free you and give you an opportunity to give him glory. Let me close here. The eighth verse says, Oh, chase and see. My God, you got your partner now. It's time to eat now. You got your praise partner with you. It's time to eat now. Oh, chase and see that the Lord is good. Hey, hey, hey. Touch somebody, oh, chase and see that the Lord is good. Why should I do this? Why should I go after this? Because this is the final parallel. The Bible says, if you chase him and see, Psalm 103 and 5 says, he will satisfy your mouth with good things and make sure your youth is like unto eagles renewed just like the eagles so if you taste and see God's gonna build you up and give you eagle strength talk to your name and say eagle strength what is eagle strength eagle strength is that God can lift you up above your past how did I get out of that trouble he escorted me out Somebody ought to help me. <laughs> Talk to your neighbor, say, neighbor, some stuff I couldn't get out by myself. I was escorted. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, he escorted me out. <laughs> he took me out of it. <laughs> he blessed me through it. <laughs> he turned me around in it. <laughs> he brought me out of it. <laughs> if you know God can do it, <laughs> you might be in something right now. Touch three people and say, watch God bring you out. Escort service. Come on the way. Somebody ought to go ahead. Dial your divine Uber and tell Uber, come get me out of this. Watch God work. 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 Watch God work! Watch God work! Watch God work!